I think the way I'm looking at it right now, I know I've got a hundred problems. So it doesn't make sense to go right into testing without fixing the problems, but already getting windy. So it's about nine o'clock on the 24th, which is the Monday of May. This is getting into the last week of May already. Another month going by, still not getting anywhere. Anyway, I'm just noticing it, it seems like that shaft is crooked. I had two lines and I went to the wrong line. So I'll take it apart and redrill it probably. Okay, that's been moved up about half an inch. Yeah, uh, it was the wrong mark. Go figure. So this is the adapter that I made earlier. It's not quite centered. I think what I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna reuse this for now, and then I'm gonna figure out a better way to make an adapter for the next version. So this should get me to the next stage, and then I can tweak it after that. However, if I take a nut and set it inside one of the square tubings, that does center itself pretty nicely. Okay, so I'll remember that for next time. So what I'm going to do is this side, I'm going to cut all the welds. Take this piece off. So if I cut these welds here, knock the pipe out, get rid of the pipe. I'm also going to shorten this. So take this side right off, put the first nut up against there, and probably cut this side off also. And then when I put the nuts on, that's how I'm going to set the, the, the position on the shaft, is by threading it on. So, headphones on, time to rock out. It is working, it's not necessarily really good, but it is working.
Oh good, I got like two inches of clearance now. Okay, the chain for the electric side is 108 links. I think this one said 132, so it is way too long. I was hoping it would be at least close. Uh, the electric one is about six links too short to use on this side because, see, the wheel sprockets are the same, but this is a much bigger sprocket than the one on the motor side. So, couldn't get there anyway. All right. much too long. Let's figure out how many links I don't need. Because then we could do a tensioner from that. So if I take out... I have saved them because if you really screw something up, you might be able to cut out a bad section of chain and splice in a new section. This chain will not likely stretch very much because it's only getting pedal torque. I'm going to try this time, I'll spend a little bit more time on it, to get a chain tensioner built. Uh, the, the one on the other side, it doesn't have any adjustability, it's just a set of rollers in about the right spot. Uh, yeah, on the Alaska trip I bought, when I was leaving, a spare chain, two spare sprockets, front and back, whole set, ready to go. Chain was too long, I knew it was too long. Did not think to actually buy the tool to cut the chain with. I don't know what the frick I was thinking. <laughs> so what I'm finally deciding, yeah, you know what, I really should cut this chain and put it on. Uh, I ended up having to go to a dealership to buy this tool. In Whitehorse, I think. So I maybe paid a little more than I needed. But on the plus side, the guy was nice and he let me borrow a tool that I didn't have. You know, so after loading the bike down to within an inch of its life, I still didn't have everything I needed. So this is just a handle. This pin, first you tighten, let's see, you back the outer part out, that pin retracts. Slide this over the chain, put this in to hold it in place, and then you just tighten the outer one down, and it runs the pin and just pushes it right through the chain. It's pretty awesome, actually. I'm going to take the master link apart, lay the chain across to where that it'll re reach, and then hold it on the sprocket so that the ends are touching, and then I know which one to cut, and then I'll drive out one pin. And if I get it right, then I can just put the master link back on and we're set. Since we got that put together, let's try it out. Shaft is slipping. That's the thing, I mean, with me standing on the pedals, because I'm going to be, you know, if I'm pedaling up a hill, I'm going to be cranking on it, which is going to tend to break these loose. I don't know that there's a way around that. The whole idea of using the threaded rod is so that I can fine tune the adjustment. If I drilled a hole through it and ran a cotter pin, would I ever hit that same spot twice? I don't really need to cotter pin the bearings, so I just need to cotter pin the drive sections. I start with the cotter pin, and if it breaks, then I can go up to a machine screw. Because, yeah, I could feel it even going downhill, I could feel it was slipping. This is the thing keys are what we need keys, key shaft, keyways. 
I can't do that. I could probably grind a key into the shaft or that other shaft that I had had keys in it, but it wasn't long enough. But I, I don't really have a practical way to make a keyway inside of the fitting. Eventually I'm going to switch this out and put keys in, but I got to figure out how to do a keyway into that. How much torque does it take to break it? Okay, got a brand new 1 8 bit. The cotter pins are 1 8. Where I'm drilling is going to be right through the nut that I welded in there, so it should be pretty solid. Jam nut. I'm hoping the jam nut will keep it from moving very much. But... motor on really the next thing I need to figure out how much pedaling resistance am I um, basically how much how hard is it going to be with the motor hooked up if I'm pedaling against the motor like if the battery goes dead and I'm just trying to go do first is put the tools away. And then take it for a ride. And then whatever breaks, we'll just fix the next day. Okay. And I think my goal is ride down the driveway like I have been. And then I'm going to go through the gate and see if I can make it to the road and back. The battery for the first time is fully charged. I've never really had it fully charged before. So I'm gonna run it, kind of mix it up a little bit, a little bit of pedaling, a little bit of motor, see how far we get. Okay, it's about a quarter after two on the 24th. I got a GoPro mounted on the side, right over the motor with a clamp. If it falls off, I'll probably hear it get wrapped up in the wheel. Ah, uh, let's see. Highly dangerous battery again here. This was the series cable. It loops all four batteries into one 48 volt pack, which should come out to about 53 more or less. 13.4. Okay, in case I couldn't hear it over the wind before, I had 13.4 uh, on most of the batteries. I'm gonna pedal first and then I'll hit the little throttle.
tell you what, when it works, it works pretty good. <laughs> I got it down on the county road, went towards the cattle guard, just pinned it. I don't think I'd want to go any faster. Yeah, the uh, chain drives seemed to work. Didn't have any other problems with that. I ran full throttle on the county road for maybe 100 yards. Got myself turned around, got back almost to the trail, and that's when it dropped off again. So 9.7, wow, okay, so that's right down to cutoff. 13, okay, 13.3, so number one went offline. 13.3, 13.3, number four, so number one. Oh, yeah, one of my tabs broke off. tab on number one. The spot weld right across both cells popped off. So, yeah, 1332. So that's right up there. So if it hadn't have broken off, we, we would have written home. Oh, is that annoying? <laughs> Alright, we got 30 minutes on the, uh, on the GoPro. Shut it off. Well, let's see, for the first integrated test, I still sheared my pedal shaft cotter pin before I really got anywhere. Uh, I got it to the bottom of the driveway, no, bot or the turnaround and back, and then it sheared before the next part of the ride. The electric side looks good for the drive section, I just gotta fix that problem with the battery, which is good. Closer. Okay, we're back in the bus. I haven't been over here much lately. I did a test ride yesterday. Yesterday was the first time I tried to do what I'm going to call integrated testing. That sounds really official. But it was the first time I actually was able to pedal and have electrics at the same time. Okay. We're in the bus. This is where I do the soldering. I just kind of like threw all the soldering stuff over here. So here's the Amazon box battery. I should almost have safety glasses on for this. Each pack is 12 volts. And the way that these battery management circuits are set up, there's a charging port and a load port. So if we look at just this part, there's eight batteries. It's four batteries in series for 12 volts and then two parallel for more, more run time. All right. So that's the pack. And there's four of those. Well, it was going wonderfully, and then it wasn't. And what happened was, how about down there? Right here, this tab just lifted right off. And this is going to be a problem because the spot welding stuff that I have is just not up to the task. Um, there is like a bazillion spot welders on eBay because everybody wants to make their own battery packs and none of them are very good from what I've seen. Anyway, I got a spot welder back there. That one kind of worked. So the idea is you take these little strips of metal and you weld them onto the tops of the batteries, tops and bottoms. So here's one that I made a while ago. And so you got a strip here and you can see the little divots where it's welded on. So from the positive, let's see, this side's positive. So it goes through the positive, bridges across, negative to positive, bridges across, bridges, you know. It's the same as if you took four batteries and hook them end to end, same as your flashlight. Nothing special there. You know, when I first got it, all of those batteries were spot welded onto this assembly. And I ripped them all apart because I don't have any way to interface with all these really nice electronics. That would have been really cool if I could have made that work. Just take this thing, plug it into an adapter, and then you'd have these really well-made modules. But since we bought these at essentially um, salvage prices, one of these batteries, I think, is about $7 a piece. I spent $300 on batteries, and I got them for about a third of retail pricing. 
So for now, I'm going to start off with just inspecting each one of these, see if there's anything else that's coming loose. This is my smaller testing pack. I'm going to just keep trying to push this thing along. So I'm just going to quickly solder these on here, and then I'm going to figure out some way to pack them a little better, because this is just thrown in a cardboard box. This was, I've actually gone further in this one in testing than I've even expected to. And if I take some, like for instance, I've got padding like Harbor Freight floor mats, cut that into strips, put it on here, put it into something that I can kind of squish it together, then it'll have some padding because going over the bumps, this thing just sits there and bounces along until it eventually yanks itself apart. And the other thing that I'm going to do is a little more strain relief because these wires, the weight of the wires is what caused it to fail in bouncing. So. Um, yesterday I got up and down the short driveway once and then I rode from here to the county road which is about a quarter of a mile roughly and then this broke and I couldn't see how to fix it out there yeah, I didn't take the time to open it up yet so I just assumed the battery was dead which was not very good well it turned out that the battery was still about 95 percent full when this failed so that gives me a little more hope so I spent a little more time researching and I realized up until now I have not been charging the battery as full as it could have been. I am going to grab my safety glasses because sometimes solder splatters. I don't want to completely mummify this yet. I still don't know if one battery is better than the other. I didn't do any performance testing on each individual cell, which is what you should do to um, balance them. So if you have eight batteries that are all the same spec, you put them together. And I never did any of that. So, okay, I think we're ready. To grab a bunch of stuff. Tape, water bottle. Now we're ready. So, the trick is not to overheat the battery when you're soldering. That's a big deal. If I completely encase it, then I can't inspect it later. But then if it still rattles loose, I won't know it. Also, this is the battery management on the side, and I'm concerned about excess heat if it's entrapped, right? Um, also, I found some weather stripping. I think if I put that across the top to kind of press down, tape across that, this should help push them down, keep them tighter. 13.3, okay, that's good. I really do want to be able to take these apart once in a while and check them. Okay, this part's done. Hopefully. Charge load. I think the way I'm looking at it right now, I know I've got a hundred problems. So it doesn't make sense to go right into testing without fixing the problems. But if I can get into testing, I can start understanding more of the problems as I go. A year and a couple months into this already, and I sold the truck in April of last year, and this is the end of May. At this point, I don't know if I have enough batteries to make it to town. So I don't really care about little things. I mean, brakes are important, don't get me wrong, but I want to get testing some of the other big questions. I know I can make brakes work. I just want to know, is pedaling going to work at all? Everything that works on here, when I transfer to Turtle, it should still work. I'm always careful going in here because there has been snakes in here. So... Yesterday was the first day for having chains on both sides, so that's kind of cool to see. 
I'm wearing shorts today because it's a beautiful day and I'm hoping not to do very much grinding and stuff. So I'm not I'm not going to bring every tool out yet. Uh, I don't know if it'll show up, but on this side there's a cotter pin there. There was a cotter pin here that sheared off. And I don't think I fully appreciated how much torque I could put on here. I'm putting on, if I stand on here, that's almost 200 foot-pounds. So that little cotter pin probably doesn't stand much of a chance. Overall, I do feel the drag. I'm dragging the motor to do like a sliding coupler, like a Lovejoy, to disengage the motor. Something like a, start, a starter Bendix would be pretty good. When you hit the throttle, it automatically engages, and when you let off the throttle, it disengages. Commence the testing. Okay, the plan is little incremental improvements as we go. But I've noticed when I was pushing it, if you're beside it, this tries to run over you. So I'm going to see what it's like going down the hill and back up again. That seems like it's working.
must be pedaling first. I'm going to pick up the tools and we'll spend a couple hours testing and see what we can learn. 13.20. Okay, that's outstanding. 13.1. So we can get down into 12s. Low 12s, high 11s before it drops off, I think. Okay, that's kind of cool.
ahead though.